So let's continue with our discussion. Uh, see, we were uh, discussing uh, meromorphic functions, okay? And you know, we have to, uh, as I told you, uh, we have to worry about meromorphic functions because uh, eventually our aim is to prove the Picard theorems. And to prove the Picard theorems, uh, we need to actually do some topology. On the space on a space of suitable space of meromorphic functions. Okay, so you see, doing topology on a space of functions is uh, is kind of the background theme. Okay, so you must understand what this is all about. Okay, and for that, I need to uh, first of all tell you about spaces of uh, 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 holomorphic functions. Okay, or analytic functions, and of course, you know. Analytic functions or holomorphic functions are also considered as meromorphic functions. Okay, so meromorphic also includes analytic. Okay, and of course, last time we saw that uh, if D is a domain uh, in the extended plane, okay, then uh, the set of meromorphic functions on D, namely those functions which are analytic on D except for uh, poles. Okay. Uh, that set is actually a field, it is a field extension of the complex numbers and I told you that the behavior, the algebraic properties of this field extension have got a lot to do with the geometry of the domain. Okay? And, and this philosophy is in fact very useful and it is exploited when you replace a domain by in fact Riemann surface. Okay? Now um, you see, uh, but whenever you are looking at a domain and, and of course let me also remind you. Uh, when when I say domain, I am taking a domain in the extended plane, which means that the domain can also include the point at infinity, okay? Which means that I am also allowing uh, study at infinity. So I am allowing neighborhoods of infinity also to be domains, okay? And this is very very important because <coughs> because the because of the following reason, uh, you see, you take a uh, you take a meromorphic function, okay? Uh, then uh, on a domain in the extended plane. Okay? Now take a, of course you know it is a meromorphic function so it, it can only have, uh, the only singularities it can have are poles. So in particular it can have only isolated singularities and they are poles. Okay? And if you go to, as, as you approach a pole the function values approach infinity. Okay? So uh, uh, that the function values approach infinity is, can be understood in two ways, one way is <coughs> in a that is the way in which you would have learnt uh, <coughs> when you did a first course in complex analysis that you see uh, uh, saying that f of z tends to infinity is the same as saying mod f z tends to infinity okay that is uh, that is it becomes orbit uh, the, the modulus of the function becomes larger and larger that is one way of saying it. But then there you do not really think of infinity as a point but now you know we are used to thinking of infinity as a point namely. Uh, a, a point in the extended plane and you physically see it as uh, the north pole in the Riemann sphere when there is an, when you look the, look at this identification of the Riemann sphere with the extended plane. Okay? So you know you picture, uh, you, you picture a domain in the extended plane as uh, by, by thinking of its image on the Riemann sphere. So, so, you, so you imagine uh, the Riemann sphere 
okay. Uh, there is a there is a north pole which corresponds to the point at infinity in the extended plane okay. Uh, mind you the, the Riemann sphere is ho it is homeomorphic to the uh, uh, extended complex plane okay. It is homeomorphic to the extended complex plane uh, with the point with the north pole corresponding to the point at infinity. So, you can make you can you can clearly see that uh, uh, you know a small disc like uh, uh, neighborhood of the north pole. Uh, that will correspond to the exterior of a circle of sufficiently large radius uh, on the plane by the stereographic projection. And when you think of a domain in the complex plane or in the extended complex plane you can think, think of its image on the uh, on the Riemann sphere okay. So, you, you can think of a domain in the extended plane as some open set on the Riemann sphere okay. That open set can include the point in uh, uh, can include the north pole or it need not include the north pole. That depends on whether the original domain you are looking in the complex plane is actually in the complex plane or it is uh, in the extended plane including the point at infinity okay. So, you must imagine uh, whenever you are thinking of a function defined on a domain in the extended plane you you, you must always imagine an, uh, an open set on the Riemann sphere and that open set can include the north pole in which case it corresponds to a domain uh, on the extended plane which, which contains the point at infinity okay. And therefore, you know we, uh, uh, so the point is that if you are looking at a function uh, which is meromorphic on a domain on such a domain in the extended plane, then you know it will have only poles okay. But if you, but if you now approach uh, uh, the, you take the points corresponding to the poles uh, on the Riemann sphere okay. You take the points corresponding to the poles on the Riemann sphere okay. Uh, outside those points the function will take values only in complex numbers okay. Whereas, at the poles what happens is uh, at the poles the, the function uh, tends to uh, infinity okay. So, the moral of the story is what you can do is you can define the function value at each of the poles to be infinity okay and thereby uh, the resulting function becomes continuous at those points okay. Now, you have to be <coughs> now you, the, the, there is a subtlety here okay. Uh, I am saying that uh, uh, the function uh, is made continuous at a pole by defining its value at a pole to be infinity okay. And when I am saying this I am not saying that the function is continuous in the usual sense okay. A function continuous in the usual sense is uh, if it is continuous at a point it is supposed to have a finite value at that point. Okay, but I want uh, so I am I am really thinking of uh, infinity as an extra value. Okay, there is a subtle uh, there is some subtlety involved. There's a little bit of confusion involved here because uh, when you say a function is continuous at a point, okay, you it means uh, you know Riemann's removable singularity theorem says if an analytic function has a isolated singularity at a point, and if the function is continuous at that point, then it is analytic. There is the, that point is not actually a singularity. But I am not saying that I am saying what you do is you take a pole of the function and you make the function continuous at that point at that pole in the following sense you declare the function value at that point to be infinity okay and regard this function as a mapping in not into C but regard it as a mapping into C union infinity the extended plane. And then with respect to that now you on C union infinity which is the extended plane there is a uh, there is a topology okay. That is exactly the topology which is uh, topological space structure which is homeomorphic to the Riemann sphere okay. And so I am thinking of uh, the function as taking values in the Riemann sphere in some sense okay. And I am saying that the function is continuous at a pole by declaring its value at the pole as, uh, to be the value infinity okay. Now this is uh, this is a certain point of view that is very very important. Okay. Let me put this following convention. Uh, let uh, D uh, in the extended complex plane be uh, a domain. So, it is an open connected subset of the extended plane okay. Uh, so, what you must remember is that D corresponds under the stereographic projection to a domain on the Riemann sphere. So, it is an open so the image of D under the, rim, the under the stereographic projection is an open connected set 
on the Riemann sphere okay that is what you must remember okay. So, so let d be a domain let uh, uh, f of z uh, be, be meromorphic on d okay that means f is uh, f has uh, f is analytic except for uh, as an isolated set of points of d at each of which f has a pole that is what it means okay that is the definition of what are metamorphic functions okay. So, uh, uh, we define we, we, we define uh, the value of f at uh, a pole of f to be infinity. See you, you make this definition okay f at every pole uh, f of a pole is, is equal to infinity you make this definition okay. So, so then the, the beautiful thing is that f it becomes a function from d to the extended plane okay. Now f is a function from d to the extended plane and the point is that as a function into the extended plane uh, this, this is continuous okay. If you are normally taking a first course in uh, complex analysis and you are working with a function which has uh, a singular points then what you do is that you consider the function to be defined on the complement of the singular points okay and it is supposed to take only complex values all right. Now what we are doing is we are allowing meromorphic functions so that means you are you are you are restricting the singular points to be isolated and they must be poles okay. So in principle you should be worried only about the function outside the poles outside the poles the function should be analytic and it should have complex values okay. But what we are doing is we are also including the poles we are defining the function value at each of the poles to be infinity and therefore the function becomes a function into the uh, extended plane okay allow it also takes the value infinity and the point is after you do this continuity is not lost and see the reason why continuity is not lost at a pole is that as if 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 z0 is a point of d where f has a pole then limit z tends to z0 uh, f of z is infinity okay but infinity is also uh, f of z0 by definition because z0 is a pole we have defined the value of f at a pole to be infinity okay. So, f of z0 is infinity and that is also equal to limit z tends to z0 fz therefore you know that is the that is the uh, definition of continuity okay at z0. So, the function becomes continuous at z0 okay and again let me warn you you should not confuse this with continuity in the usual sense I am not saying that uh, uh, as an analytic function it is continuous at, at a pole that is not correct okay it certainly is discontinuous because when I talk about analytic functions I am only worried about uh, functions which are taking complex finite complex values not not the, not the value at infinity okay. So, uh, so when I say continuous here you, sh you you must take it with a pinch of salt you have to be careful okay. So, so let me write that down if uh, z0 belonging to d is a pole of f uh, then limit z tends to z0 of f of z is equal to f of z0 is equal to infinity. So, this is the uh, this is the extra definition okay that we make. So, the uh, actually you know um, uh, uh, sometimes in the language of Riemann surfaces we say that uh, yeah, meromorphic function on a Riemann surface is the same as a holomorphic function uh, into the Riemann sphere. Okay, uh, we say this often, and it really makes sense in this sense. Okay, so the point is that you know, uh, by including the value at infinity, you are able to give a function value at a pole, namely the value infinity. Okay, and and that is uh, and and that and that makes the function continuous on the domain. But the but the point is that uh, uh, the target domain the target domain becomes the extended plane 
and the topology on that is the you know the topology of the one point compactification which is homeomorphic to the Riemann sphere okay. So, you know for all purposes you know uh, uh, the picture that you imagine is the following. So, so let me so let me draw this picture it is very very important. So, whenever you know uh, so for all practical purposes this is the best thing to imagine uh, on, on, on one hand you have the you have the Riemann sphere okay. So, on the other hand also you have the Riemann sphere and you know well this point is a north pole okay this corresponds to the point at infinity and this is again the north pole which corresponds to the uh, point at infinity okay and and whenever i put this uh, this du this double si uh, double sided arrow i actually refer to the stereographic projection which compares the Riemann sphere to as topologically isomorphic with the extended plane with the point at infinity uh, corresponding to the north pole n okay. And what we are doing is see basically you are looking at a you are actually looking at a uh, at a domain in the extended plane. So, you know it is going to be some domain like this okay and in fact you know I, I should I should not put uh, uh, you know uh, I, I should not put the boundary. So, it is something like this, so this is my domain. So, the way I have drawn it now it contains the north pole. So, that means that when you uh, take its image under the stereographic projection it, it actually corresponds to a neighborhood of infinity okay and this is an open connected set on the north pole okay and I have this function f. I have the function f which is defined on that and it is taking values again uh, in uh, you must think of it as taking values again on the Riemann sphere okay and and whenever you think of the Riemann sphere see you picture the Riemann sphere but always think of C union infinity okay. The, uh, the Riemann sphere minus the north pole is the complex plane via the stereographic version and the north pole corresponds to the point at infinity. So, what will happen is that your function f will uh, is defined or uh, you must picture it as being defined on a subset of the Riemann sphere and it is the, the image it take the, the, the image of the function is also a subset of the Riemann sphere. Okay. And the point is that uh, if you if you take a if you take a point which is a pole of f, okay, then uh, the function has a value there. Uh, that's what we have done. Uh, if you take a pole of f, the function value is infinity. So you know if I, if I draw a pole, so suppose suppose I have z not, z not is a pole. Okay, then. Uh, f of z0 is uh, is is equal to infinity okay and so what will happen is that this f of z0 you must picture it as being mapped onto the north pole okay uh, mind you uh, in this uh, 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 the way i have drawn it uh, is not entirely accurate because there is an identification on the left and on the right with C union infinity. So, what is happening is that there is this the, the thing on the left is C union infinity okay this thing on the right is also the C union infinity C union the point at infinity. So, uh, both of them are the Riemann sphere and then I have a domain D inside C union infinity and I have this function f this is the picture. So, D is a domain in C union infinity f is taking values in C union infinity you allow the value infinity and that is a value you are you assign to a function at a point which is a pole okay. And in principle this f that I have written in red is actually the uh, is gotten from the f that I have written in purple after identification with the stereographic projection. So, in principle uh, for this f here uh, I should I, I should use some other symbol I should use f tilde if you want. And for this this point z naught that I have written uh, in purple is not exactly z0 it is actually a stereographic projection of z0 the point z0 is actually as a point in d okay and after i identified uh, the c union infinity with the riemann stereographic projection then the point z0 in d corresponds to this point z0 on the uh, on the riemann sphere okay so you know uh, so you know forgetting this this uh, uh, forgetting the notational complication that is involved in all the time carrying the uh, stereographic uh, projection okay you always imagine that things are happening on the Riemann sphere 
okay and uh, the the reason why this is very very useful is because you see uh, if you are looking at only the extended plane the point at infinity is something that you cannot see okay you you cannot see it as a point and more importantly you cannot uh, for example uh, define a distance between uh, the point at infinity and some other point in the plane okay there is no there is no way of doing it in, a, in, in the usual sense but if you think of the extended complex plane uh, as a, a Riemann sphere then the point infinity is just the north pole and now you know if you uh, if you now you can define a distance between any two points in the extended plane by simply taking the distance uh, on the Riemann sphere of the images of these points under the stereographic projection. So you know for example uh, th therefore uh, if you are imagining all the time the Riemann sphere uh, you can even uh, talk about uh, a neighborhood of infinity uh, which is at a uh, which has a certain radius. You, you can you can talk about a circle centered at infinity with some finite radius okay and that is something that you can picture as a circle uh, as the interior of a circle uh, um, as a circle surrounding the point n on the uh, on the stereographic projection with a certain radius finite radius okay and that radius can be made smaller and smaller okay and you can imagine that as I make that radius smaller and smaller under the stereographic projection I get a larger and larger circle on the on the complex plane okay. So uh, see this is a certain point of view that you should always remember you you always think about uh, a, a domain in uh, the extended plane as actually a domain in the on the Riemann sphere an open connected set of the Riemann sphere okay and open connected set in the uh, uh, on the Riemann sphere the topology is mind you is just the induced topology from R3 the Riemann sphere is just the sphere surface of the sphere centered at the origin radius 1 unit in real 3 space and real 3 space is Euclidean space you know it has a standard topology it is a metric space it is a complete metric space. So uh, you take the induced topology on this subset so there is a nice topology and it is in fact even a metric space okay therefore you think of it like that okay. Uh, so this is something that you must uh, so you know if you if you want if you if you want uh, I should do the following thing uh, you know I should actually relabel this as f tilde you know and I should actually relabel this point as z0 tilde where this tilde means you translate everything to the Riemann sphere and you will have to therefore bring in the stereographic projection but most of the time we do not worry about it okay. See what we are going to do is as I told you we are going to do uh, we have to worry about uh, space of uh, uh, you have to look at the space of uh, meromorphic functions on a domain okay and you have to do topology on it and more generally uh, the simpler case is trying to do topology on a space of analytic functions on a domain. So see what is this topology all about see uh, the, the most important thing that we will be worried about in uh, the topology of a space of functions is compactness okay. So you see uh, compactness is the uh, is somehow the uh, most important uh, uh, property that we have to study. So essentially what we have to study is compactness of spaces of functions. What kind of functions? Functions essentially we have to study uh, meromorphic functions but then uh, before that you will ha have to also worry about holomorphic functions or analytic functions because they are special cases of meromorphic functions. Meromorphic functions which have no singularities are essentially holomorphic or analytic functions. So now let me do the following thing. Uh, uh, so let d you take a take d to be a domain in the extended complex plane okay then what you have is uh, so domain domain means it is non empty it is an open non empty connected subset okay and then uh, you have this uh, so you you have this uh, uh, you have the complex numbers sitting inside as constant uh, holomorphic functions in uh, h of d so let me put this notation and this is m of d okay so what is this m of d this is something that i uh, told you last time this is this this is a set of uh, uh, meromorphic functions on d okay this is so let me write this here set of uh, uh, meromorphic functions functions on d okay this is a field uh, as we have seen last time okay and uh, at this point you only you do not worry about the value at infinity 
okay, at a pole. Okay. Uh, this is completely algebraic, so you are uh, you are really not worried about uh, looking at the function which uh, looking at infinity as one of the values of the function. Okay. Uh, so this is a field we have seen this, and you have, and therefore this is a field extension of the complex numbers. See the this is uh, uh, this map C sitting inside this is you are thinking of lambda as a constant constant function lambda. If lambda is a complex number, you you identify it with the constant function which is equal to lambda. And what is this h of t? This is actually the set of holomorphic functions on d. Holomorphic is the same as analytic. Okay, this is a set of holomorphic functions on d. All right, and the fact is that uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, the set of holomorphic functions will <coughs> only be a it will be a ring in fact it will be a C algebra it will not be a field because you know I cannot invert a holomorphic function to get a holomorphic function unless I know that it is non-zero is that that is not ever going to be 0 because wherever it is going to be 0 <coughs> I cannot invert it okay uh, because for the inverted function uh, the 0 will the 0 of the original function will be a pole of a the inverted function okay so and the moment a function has a pole it's not holomorphic okay it's not analytic so the point is that you see uh, this this is uh, so so this is a this is a c algebra and in fact it's commutative it's a commutative algebra mind you whenever we talk about algebras the algebra an algebra is a is a ring which is also a vector space over a field and uh, in general it could be the the algebra need not the multiplication in the algebra need not be commutative for example the simplest examples are of course matrix algebras you know matrix multiplication is not commutative so uh, but of course uh, uh, func uh, alge uh, algebras of functions are commutative okay because they are taking values in c and uh, c uh, is a is a commutative field okay multiplication in c is commutative all right so uh, the the fact is that uh, if you take a holomorphic function in d uh, it is certainly a meromorphic function on d okay if you take a function that is holomorphic on d uh, uh, i have to only worry about uh, to invert it i have to only worry about uh, points where the function has zeros but then you know zeros of a holomorphic function are isolated therefore uh, at each of those zeros the inverted function will only have a pole therefore uh, there should be no problem. So if you take any holomorphic function on D uh, uh, you may not be able to invert it to get a holomorphic function on D but if you invert it you will certainly get a meromorphic function on D. So in particular you see the meromorphic functions on D uh, uh, will contain inverses for all uh, holomorphic functions okay. Now, uh, fine so m of d contains uh, also inverses of non zero elements in h of d okay and h of d is uh, h of d is mind, mind you it's a subring it's a sub algebra okay this is this this is a sub algebra this is a sub algebra and uh, uh, h of d is uh, is not a field but m of d is a field this is what it is algebraically okay and i told you that there is a lot of geometry in studying this field extension m of d over c it is a field extension studying the algebraic properties of that extension has got to do with a lot with the geometry of D okay. Now well keep these things aside uh, uh, I want to go away uh, from the algebra and I want to go into topology. So you see let us look at just h of D just look look at h of D and try to worry about topology on this on the on the set h of D okay. So uh, how do you do topology? Uh, you think of a of h of d as a set and you would like to give some topology on it okay now uh, the the uh, and you know uh, it's not that you uh, you you don't give uh, an arbitrary topology you give a topology which makes sense uh, with the functions uh, with the with the domain of the functions okay so uh, so what is the idea the idea is you are trying to uh, worry about uh, uh, a topology of a space of functions ok 
okay now what i want to do is that you know uh, i want to tell you that this topology has got to do with uh, uh, it has got to do with point wise convergence of functions okay uh, on the uh, point wise convergence with respect to points of the domain on which the functions are defined which is d in this case okay so i want to say that the topology on h of d or if you want to even worry about more generally topology on m of d that has to do with convergence uh, with point wise convergence with respect to points of d okay so so this is a, uh, this is what i'm trying to uh, emphasize when i say I'm, i want to do topology on the space of functions i want to worry about topology on the set of holomorphic functions or uh, i want to worry about topology on the space of meromorphic functions set of meromorphic functions okay then the topology has to do with point wise convergence now uh, uh, so so why is that true you know you need some uh, uh, motivation for that and in fact you know uh, uh, let me be even more accurate we are not really worried only about point wise convergence because point wise convergence is a very weak ob is, a, is something very very weak you know uh, the reason why it's weak is you suppose you have a uh, suppose you have family of functions or a sequence of functions which is converging point wise to a limit function then the limit function need not be continuous even if the original uh, members of the family of functions each of the members is continuous okay you know that you need a uniform limit for the limit to limit function to be continuous so it's not only point wise convergence we are worried about we need something stronger that's uniform but what happens in complex analysis is you don't get uniform always on your domain what you get is uniform on compact subsets of the domain okay for example you will get uniform on closed disks inside the domain and that is a special kind of uniform convergence which is uniform convergence on compact sets and that's called normal convergence and see it's so what i want to impress upon you is that the topology on the space of uh, holomorphic functions or on the space of meromorphic functions on a domain has to has to be studied with the view point of normal convergence okay it is point wise convergence and it is not totally uniform convergence but it is uniform convergence on compact sets okay and Uh, you know in some sense uh, why is all this important uh, why is all this important because because of, you see let me recall a little bit of basic topology to help you uh, to see uh, the following thing let x be any set so this is some uh, this is some some motivation x is any set take any set uh, not even a topological space of course uh, yeah, of uh, assume it's not em not empty okay then what you do is uh, you take uh, Uh, you know l to be well the set of all functions from x to r okay you take the set of all real valued functions on x okay take the set of all real valued functions on x so these are just uh, functions on a set okay the only thing is that these functions have real values right now the point is that this l becomes immediately yeah this becomes a real this becomes a real vector space l becomes a real vector space all right and uh, you know how because point wise addition and point wise scalar multiplication makes sense so if f is a function on x with real values and g is another function on x with real values f plus g can be defined as f of x f plus g of x is just fx plus gx for each small x in capital x and similarly if lambda is a real number lambda f can be defined as lambda f value at x is lambda times fx okay so this becomes a this becomes an r vector space all right and well what you can do is among these functions you can look at those functions which are uh, uh, whose images are bounded okay you can look at bounded functions so in this l i can have this subset b okay which is the set of all f belonging to l such that f of x is bounded the image is bounded so these are bounded real valued functions okay the set of all real valued functions l is a vector space it's a real vector space and you now you take this subset which is which consists of bounded real valued functions okay 
then uh, then it is also a subspace because if f is bounded and g is bounded then f plus g is bounded if f is bounded then lambda times f is also bounded okay. So, uh, the point is that this is a this is a this is a subspace this is a real subspace of this vector space all right. Now the beautiful thing about this subspace is that because your uh, images of functions are bounded you can make this into a Banach space you can make it into a complete normed linear space you can define a norm on it the supremum norm that makes it uh, into a topological space in fact it makes it into a metric space the metric being induced by the norm and with respect to that metric it becomes complete and this is essentially because co of the completeness of the real line okay. So, th this object here is actually and in fact uh, uh, the beautiful thing is that I can uh, 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 in all these spaces I can even multiply to real valued functions to get a real valued function and the multiplication is commutative. So, these are not just spaces they are in fact commutative algebras. So, L is actually uh, in fact a commutative R algebra okay. B is also a commutative R algebra but B is in fact a commutative Banach R algebra okay. It is a Banach space it is a Banach algebra alright. So, uh, so let me write this uh, so this this fellow here is actually uh, commutative R algebra and and this fellow here is actually a commutative Banach algebra it is a commutative Banach algebra and the point is that you define norm f to be equal to supremum x small x in capital X of mod f x and the supremum will be a finite quantity because I am looking at f in B f is the image is bounded and you know that uh, one of the properties of the real line is that uh, you take a bounded set its supremum exists and it is a finite real number okay. In fact you know that is equivalent to completeness of the real line the real line uh, that every Cauchy sequence converges on the uh, Cauchy sequence of real numbers converges is as strong as requiring that any subset of the real line which is bounded above has a supremum okay uh, and that is equivalent to also saying that any subset of the real line that is bounded below has an infimum okay. So, if you take this norm this is a sup norm it makes B into a normed vector space and the norm induces a metric uh, in the following way D of f comma g is just norm of f minus g. So, with this D function distance function this uh, B becomes a metric space okay it is the, the it is said to be the metric induced by the norm and with respect to this metric B is complete. So, it is a Banach space and in fact it is an algebra so it is a Banach algebra okay. Now, now what you do is all this is correct if you are taking x to be just a set okay. Now, you put the extra condition that x is a topological space okay. If you put the condition that x is a topological space then instead of simply looking at functions from x to r I can look at continuous functions from x to r because now the source x is a topological space it has a topology okay. So, I look at functions uh, which are continuous also and when I do that then I get this familiar uh, uh, object that you should have seen in a uh, course in analysis uh, the namely the space of all continuous bounded real valued functions on the topological space x. So, this is if x is topo if, if x is a topological space. Okay. And the fact is that uh, this is a closed subspace. So, mind you B is already a topological space and this is a closed subspace you can show that this is a closed subspace, subspace namely you can show that if you have a uh, if you have a uh, set uh, uh, I mean if you have a, if you take a point which is a limit point of continuous uh, bounded real valued functions then the limit function is also continuous bounded real value okay therefore this becomes a so in particular uh, this uh, space uh, cxr that also becomes a commutative banach r algebra okay and the beautiful thing is the following the beautiful thing is that for a function for a for a sequence of uh, uh, so you know uh, now 
uh, in CXR I can uh, mind you CXR is also a matrix space okay because uh, there is a metric induced by the norm. So I can make sense of a sequence of functions converging to a function what is that convergence if you check it out that convergence is nothing but uniform convergence okay therefore the moral of the story is that uniform convergence of real valued functions sequence of real valued functions on a topological space is the same as the convergence in the norm the so with respect to the sup norm on the uh, on the Banach algebra of bounded uh, real valued functions. So this is to give you the motivation that you know uh, whenever you try to uh, get hold of a topology on a space of functions okay the convergence should have to do with uh, point wise convergence in fact it has to do with normal convergence okay uh, or at least to begin with it has to got to do with uniform convergence but normally what happens is you cannot get uniform convergence on a whole space uh, in complex analysis for example in the case of holomorphic functions you can get to only uniform convergence with respect to compact subsets. So the topology of uh, a space of uh, uh, meromorphic functions or holomorphic functions needs to be studied with respect to normal convergence okay that is the motivation okay. So, so we will continue with the, the next lecture. So let me write this down uh, this is also uh, commutative Banach algebra. with with convergence same as uniform convergence on x okay